Just look around. You got the mountains, you got the most beautiful city in the whole entire country. The university is absolutely, looks like it's out of a storybook. It's just beautiful. People are incredibly genuine and, and extremely nice. It's just a place that obviously I'd want my kids to go to school. And it sells itself. You don't have to sell anything about this place. You just got to get them here. You know, the old field of dreams. Yeah. Build it and they will come. It's already built. Doesn't have to be perfect, ain't gonna be perfect. We go compete for 60 freaking minutes. All right, enjoy the opportunity, enjoy the environment, and then go play our butts off, play for one another, and have a hell of a lot of fun. Everybody got me? Yes, right. Like I said, like, we, we play with a chip on our shoulder at Tennessee. So, um, you know, we get a lot of disrespect. So we wanna make it clear that we're gonna come out and dominate uh, day in and day out. It's, you know, here it's, it's Tennessee. So, you know, we're gonna get the best guys here. You know, that's just every year. Um, every time we're out there, it's competition. You know, nobody has a spot. Nobody's comfortable. We're all working. Do you remember when we fell in love? I remember, don't worry. Do you remember? I remember how it all began. How could I ever guess the first time? Do you remember? I could feel it. My name is Boogie Bentley. And I'm Coach Jay. I'm glad you dig the uh, intro music as much as I do. I feel like it's our, it's, it's, like, it. it's it's go time. Like we're sitting in the back, we're talking, having some good conversation about football, about life. We play that intro and it's go time. It is go time. We're dancing in the back. Everybody's getting fired up, ready to go. Coach Jay, we were talking about it. I'm fired up about this one. This may be mm -hmm. my favorite breakdown we've done. I don't know. Nico and Arch is pretty good. How excited are you for this one? George McIntyre, Deuce Knight. Uh, you know, I, th I think just kind of like the Nico and Arch one, I mean, obviously that one wasn't as divisive uh, amongst the Tennessee fan base as it was maybe the, the uh, national fan base, but um, certainly going to be a divisive discussion over the next, uh, gosh, however many months it takes to settle on who we're going to get in the boat out of these two. And man, they, uh, they both have extreme upside. They are players that you could get excited about and behind either way. And no matter who you pick, you might not be wrong. If we miss out on one of these guys, the other guy uh, might just become a legend in the game. These guys can absolutely ball out. And uh, uh, if, if, if the good Lord wants to uh, uh, give Coach Jay a Christmas present, uh, he will put both of these guys in Tennessee orange mm. and uh, they can have a little contest with uh, Jake Merklinger and, and may the best quarterback win. And uh, we will march on to some big time bowl wins over the next uh, foreseeable future games for Tennessee. Yeah. Brought up a good point because I was thinking about all the live breakdowns we've done. Because all the other film breakdowns are just one player that you break down and we go through it. Uh, but the, mm -hmm. the live versions are always some type of competitive nature to them. We talked about offensive linemen, head-to-head, -head, wide receivers, head-to-head. -head. Defensive backs, we were all in alignment because we're talking about three Tennessee players. Arch versus mm -hmm. Nico. The, the difference is the style. Like you've got two quarterbacks in George McIntyre and Deuce Knight, two different styles of play. One's an in-state kid. One's an out-of-state kid. Both have extremely high interest in Tennessee. So I feel like, as you said, we were united on Arch versus Nico. 
Now this fan base may be divided. Who do you want more? If you had to pick one, McIntyre or Deuce Knight. And look, I was listening to VolQuest this week. Mm. They were talking about these two guys, and I think it was Brent Hubbs brought up a good point. Number one player in the state, George McIntyre. If Josh Heupel misses and decides to go with Deuce Knight, Mm. People are going to remember. Let's go back and talk about Trevor Lawrence. That's something that sticks out to the Tennessee fan base. So, so many different things to look at in this film breakdown. I'm excited about it. Let's run down the chat. Let's see who is hanging out. But you guys know what to do first. Smash the thumbs up just below the video. We would appreciate that. It's quick, free, and easy. Also, hit share. Share this thing out. Let somebody know we are live. Look, it is June. Nobody wants to talk about football except for diehard, psychotic fans like us. And you. So share this thing out. Let people know we are live. Let's see who's in the house. Uh, Vols for Live 554 showed up at 4 30 and said, uh, Can we go ahead and start now? I thought there about it. There we go. I'm I thought about actually it. just starting it without Coach J. Uh, and I would just sit here and look at you guys. I would have no clue what to say. Angry Titan is here, says, Let's start it up at 4 45. Uh, Wade Rouse in the house. Matt Dumit is here. What is up, my friend? Arkansas Ball is here. It says, Evening fan, uh, fam, ready for some good footage to ride down the road, too. Hope everyone has a great evening. Good to see you in the chat, brother. Uh, did you hear who committed to Clemson? Man, what a throwback mm. to to Monday night. What? what did, who committed? Did someone every, commit? I, I must have missed it, but yeah, I didn't see it. Every, I seem like every 15 minutes, somebody uh, came into the chat Monday night to remind us of that. Uh, Max is in the house. What's up, buddy? Good to see you in the chat. Coach Jay's dropping your custom talking balls emoji. You, you know, you could just drop your talking balls emoji. That would be fun. Uh, Hypo for Prez is here. What's up? Joe Brown is in the house. Dakota is in the house. Fallout Zone is here. What is up? My friend, uh, Mrs. Coach J, always representing. Tip Jackson is here. Uh, we got a super sticker from the Dub Daddy. Thank you for the $5. That's an entry fee. That is how you get into the Boom Boom Room. Uh, we appreciate that. Nelson says, what's up, my people? Good to see you, my friend. Nelson, the Twitter celebrity. He's a celebrity. I don't think he likes it when I say that. Everybody knows who Nelson is. He is Twitter, Tennessee Vol Twitter famous. Wade Rouse is here. Wade Rouse has the Talking Vols logo tattooed on his body. That is a diehard fan. Thank you for the five bucks. Uh, says, I know there's a football video, but does anyone by chance have tickets to the baseball game for Sunday uh, They want to that they want to sell? Let me know. Uh, hit Wade up in the Facebook group. He is active in the Facebook group. If anybody knows of tickets, let him know. Uh, let's see. All right, let's jump into this thing. Guys, like I said, smash the thumbs up, share it out, all that good stuff. We're going to dive right into it. Again, so many intriguing things to talk about. But the big thing, too, that's worth talking about, Nico. Jake Merklinger. And now you said it, Coach Jake. Can you add Deuce Knight and McIntyre both in this class? I think it's a possibility. I think it is a possibility. Yeah, it, it's it's not like completely insane. I mean, in the modern N NIL era, uh, we'll see. It, it helps that you can just transfer it, Will, mm -hmm. nowadays. But uh, uh, money is <laughs> money's part of the equation, like it or not, guys. So, um, We'll see. We'll see if there's enough to go around. We'll see how important NIL is to these kids. You know, some some kids NIL is going to be super important. I've talked to some kids who flat out don't care. Uh, so, uh, you know, it just kind of just kind of matters who you're dealing with. Like anything, it's just another uh, another piece of the recruiting puzzle. You know, do I got to offer the kid NIL? Do I got to offer the kid playing time? Do I've got to make sure he's got a pretty cheerleader to take him around campus when he gets into Tennessee. Do us, do you want to go uh, hit the river and go tubing with Nico? You know, what, what is important to them? Do they want to hear about the uh, astrophysics program like Josh Dobbs? I don't know. You kind of just got to figure out what makes these kids tick and, and go for it. Uh, I wish I knew what makes George and Deuce tick uh, that well, but I do not. Hopefully the coaching staff, is getting to the bottom of it and is uh, uh, all the wiser than Mr. Coach J over here. Wayne is in the house. What is up, Wayne? Thank you for the $5. Tip in the tip jar. That's the entry fee to get into the stream. We appreciate that. <clears throat> uh, let, let's have some fun right out of the gate, and we'll see if we can sway you or convince you. I think I know who I'm leaning towards, but, man, I, I've got split personalities when it comes to this debate. Put it in the chat sure. right now. Who are you rooting for? Who do you hope Tennessee lands? If you could only pick one, you're going George McIntyre or Deuce Knight. We're going to start this thing off with George McIntyre uh, because he's the in-state kid. Again, we're talking about two quarterbacks in the class of 2025. Look, these guys, 
McIntyre is going to be a five-star, Coach Jay, and I think that Deuce Knight's likely going to be a five-star. It's early in the process. We will see them start to update uh, those rankings as they go. But you can see George McIntyre, according to the On3 industry rankings, according to On3, according to 247 Sports, uh, they got him as the number one player in the state of Tennessee, number two quarterback in the country, top 15 player nationally, uh, six, five and a half, 185 pounds out of Brentwood Academy in Nashville. And I think that's that's what makes this so tough because he is that in-state kid. And we talk about the importance of putting up a border, putting up those walls, keeping the in-state kids home. George McIntyre, this is from uh, Charles Power, recruiting analyst over at On3, uh, says that George McIntyre currently checks in as the number two quarterback. He's tall, pocket passer with a strong multi-sport background and has shown some flashes of playmaking ability. How McIntyre stacks up mm -hmm. from an arm talent perspective should become more clear with added exposure in neutral settings along with viewing his progression as a junior. That's something else we got to keep in mind. We're looking at sophomore take tonight. These kids have a lot of football in front of them. Uh, he was just in town. Uh, he visited Tennessee on April the 5th. He visited Michigan in April. Also took visits to Alabama, LSU, Clemson, and Georgia all in March. I believe, uh, you can correct me if I'm wrong or if you don't know, we'll just roll right through it. I think George McIntyre is going to camp with Tennessee in the next week or so. Do you know anything about that? I'm pu totally putting you on the spot. Yeah, no, I haven't heard anything about that. Um, I mean, I wouldn't be surprised, though, right? Uh, just – uh, well, I mean, not right down the road, but close enough, right, guys? Uh, definitely a, uh, a school with strong Tennessee uh, ties. What, didn't Ben Bartholomew go to, to Brentwood Academy? Man, I used to love watching me some Ben Bartholomew. I don't know about you guys, but uh, um, I, I, uh, I, I wouldn't be surprised if he's camping with Tennessee soon, but I do not know for sure if he is. Deuce just camped, I think, last week. And uh, yeah, I, believe, I saw him there. Yeah, I yeah. saw that. And I yeah, think yeah, George yeah. is supposed to camp in the in the coming weeks uh, as well. But uh, so we'll, we'll keep an eye out on that, which brings me I completely forgot to mention at the top of the show. Uh, we, we've got a live stream coming up next Thursday with Sports Talk J next Thursday, June the 15th at 7 p.m. But also uh, either the third or fourth week, I'm going to talk to Dell Dowden. He's the lead recruiting reporter for Tennessee Rivals. Uh, and, and he was the one, he sent me some information on Deuce Knight. He said, hey, here's a little teaser uh, for your live stream coming up. He's, he's a fan of the show. He actually watches the content. He covers recruiting for rivals, and he watches uh, this this uh, channel. So uh, shout out to him. Very Can't nice. wait to get him on the show. Rocky Top Tom for five. Appreciate that. Got to pick George Mack. He's in state. He'll be rated a five-star before it's all over. Must maintain home state recruiting dominance uh, to compete elsewhere. GBO. Thank you, Rocky Top Tom. We appreciate that super chat. So, without further ado, let's dive into a little film breakdown. This is where Coach Jay takes the bull by the horns, and I'm going to sit back and listen. Uh, we got the sophomore highlights for George McIntyre on the screen. Uh, take it away, Coach Jay. Something you mentioned is his interceptions. <clears throat> uh, I've already skipped past that, but if you want to touch on it, you can go ahead and do that. Yeah, that's okay. Uh, we, yeah, we were kind of talking about it off film, guys. Uh, you know, forever, however many thousands of yards that uh, George – uh, passed for as a sophomore on his varsity team. He only had four interceptions. And for those of you who have been paying attention to some of Hendon's numbers, uh, some of Milton's numbers, and some of those UCF uh, quarterback numbers, Hypel values a quarterback that takes care of the ball. Uh, you cannot run this high-powered Hypel offense if you do not take care of the football. I couldn't tell you what um deuces interception uh to touchdown ratio is or even how many he threw in his sophomore year but i can tell you it's extremely um important to hype no doubt about it so it's definitely going to be a factor uh picking up right here <clears throat> we've got uh twins to the bottom side of the screen a uh, single wing formation and you know just kind of looking at the defense right now uh look at number 30 headed towards the ref just uh, totally discombobulated trying to figure out what the play is from the uh the coaching staff on the side of the screen the safety directly behind him uh trying to let him know where to go uh perhaps but still himself a little bit out of position i i certainly would like him if i were the defense coordinator shaded a little more um at the bottom of that uh, it looks like a p or an f there and then we get press coverage on the x wide receiver at the top of the screen so 
man, George right here knows what coverage he has at the top of the screen. He knows he's got press. He knows if his X wide receiver can get a stem to the inside or pop outside on him on a nine route, a go route. Uh, he's going to take a look. Uh, we're going to start off pretty, pretty simple here, guys. Uh, Boogie, why don't you go ahead and, and let this one run till about the 11 second mark? Um, just, just, just real quick here. Just take a quick second or two pop pop there you go and <laughs> that defense alignment that's bringing pressure up the middle i don't know if he thought a screen was coming or what the <laughs> heck he's bailing out on but young defense alignment you get caught in no man's land like that just go put a hit on the quarterback don't don't kind of um you know barney fife it through the middle uh and, and picking up on that x wide receiver at the top of the screen uh, he has already uh, stemmed through that uh, cornerback in press. Looks like he's just a shade past him. George has already winded up for a throw. And uh, Boogie, you can let, go ahead and let this one play. There's not too much to talk about. Just a perfect uh, lead, an absolute strike, and you, you can't throw it any better than that, ladies and gentlemen. Just, just a perfect pass, small little play action. like to see a little bit better of a fake perfect lead and if if that wide receiver had elite speed he'd he'd be off to the races that's for sure jalen hyatt uh certainly would have been gone on that play <clears throat> moving on this is a formation i expect to see a little more of in the future that we haven't quite uh dipped into yet at tennessee but we got an empty look quads to the bottom of the screen so those of you know who know our uh our quads formation that's going to be the z wide receiver all the way to the bottom of the screen uh, with the S wide receiver just to the inside of him, followed by the Y wide receiver. And uh, for those of you football buffs, that would be the T, the T wide receiver just to the inside of him with the X all alone on the top side of the screen. And look at how much space that cornerback at the top side of the screen has given him. And uh, if we do a little investigation here, we'll figure out why this would be uh, fourth down and about 23 yards to go. Um, and, you know, if if um, they weren't down by two scores, you might be playing him a little tighter, but you know they need to go deep here. Uh, Boogie, if you want to just let a, a couple seconds tick off here to maybe the 31-second mark, uh, we can talk about um, what we're seeing here. Uh, right about there we go. As we see the defensive end on the bottom side of the screen has slipped. Uh, his offensive tackle, uh, George, isn't going to be able to go to that flood concept. Uh, all of his empty looks flooding to the inside. Boogie, you want to just go ahead and let him maybe a couple more tick off to the 34-second mark here. Uh, George nicely slides outside and then pause. Uh, right about here, George is just going to point to his wide, his y, wide receiver. And uh, you remember that old Nerf commercial back in the 90s, Boogie, where it was like, go long real long yeah that's, that's backyard uh, football just go deep yeah yeah go yeah deep. yeah that that's that's what he's kind of asked for right here and uh if you want to just let it fly here boogie let it fly uh he tells him to go long and george throws an absolute death star 60 plus yard laser uh perfect 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 ball placement uh once again an absolute dime boogie if you let the next play run after this you'll get it from the alternate angle uh and you can just let it run i'll talk you through it the uh the end weaves inside here george pops out go long real long throws an absolute once again death star laser guided bomb to the wide receiver absolutely a uh, beautiful throw by george right there um guys he is an elite in special arm tackle uh, arm talent. Sorry, I can't talk right now. Arm talent. And I see the chat talking in there. Uh, yeah, guys, a sophomore, believe it or not, a sophomore uh, through that ball. Um, I'm not quite sure who the coach is at Brentwood Academy, but he is licking his chops over his chances over the next two years. I promise you that. So, so let me ask you this, Coach Joe, because I think one of the things that comes out, and, and this is, I'm, uh, I'm talking myself out of it too. One of the things that stands out to me about Deuce Knight is his ability to escape pressure, his <clears> athleticism. <throat> Look, George McIntyre, number two ranked quarterback in the country. Deuce Knight, number one dual threat quarterback. But seeing that right there, George McIntyre has enough athleticism to get out of the pocket. How, how much, 
do you put into that? A guy like Deuce Knight that has that extreme athleticism versus a guy like George McIntyre. Maybe he has the better arm, but he does enough to escape pressure and extend plays. If you can make your read fast enough, right, then you can negate it because you still have RPO, right, run pass option. So I can still hand it off to my running back. But if I'm taking away that third option ability of me keeping it, of the quarterback keeping it and running with it, your reads have to be flawless, guys. They have to be super tight and intelligent reads. Um, we'll see. We'll watch. I know we'll all watch George's career with um, with great intrigue over the next few years. And we'll see how quickly he can digest that. He is showing early signs of elite play reading ability and we all know uh when a quarterback can can read the field at an elite level uh you don't have to be michael vick you can be peyton manning and and certainly get it done so um it's something to consider but once again you have a good running game uh and you can make that read early enough uh you can negate the downside to it i think we're looking at that with joe milton <clears throat> obviously hendon hooker more elusive escapes pressure and now going into 2023, I'm concerned about the offensive line. Your offensive line better hold up because Joe, I think he's great in designed runs, but not as much escaping pressure. Let's move it right along here. One minute on George McIntyre. Okay, guys. Uh, <laughs> looks familiar to the outside, right, guys? We have uh, deuces, single back step, but our deuces are in stack. Not quite as wide as the hypo, um, as the, the hypo stack deuces go. But look at what this stack does, guys. I know you might have heard it talked about by announcers, but look at our DBs stacked right behind our stacked wide receivers. They have declared man right here all the way, right? We know what they are running. Therefore, we're going to have pretty good reads, and, and it makes sense. Uh, it should be noted uh, the score is 7-3 to three right here in the fourth quarter, and I believe there's like one or two seconds on a stop clock. So this play is for the game right here, guys. Uh, they need this score or they will lose this game. And I don't know about you guys, but I want to know that my quarterback is going to be clutch. I want to know that he's not going to uh, screw the pooch, muff the punt, whatever euphemism you want to use. I want to know that he's got some moxie, right? That he's a winner. Uh, let's let's see what we got here. We got a nickel look out of the defense. Uh, kind of interesting. I don't think uh, Brent one's going to be quite uh, – have enough chutzpah to run a run play right here, or not a nickel look. Sorry, it's it's just kind of a, a three three five with your your uh, your man declared to the outside. But um, let's uh, take a look at what we got, Boogie. And you can maybe refreeze it about the one o three mark. One o three. Uh, we saw the old the old fire blitz right out of it. Both linebackers came. Uh, the Mike on the right side of your screen uh kind of kind of pushed through that right let's watch him get through there again um there you go yeah he gets through there again uh once again george is going to have to evade this let's take a look at his wide receivers right here to the right which is where he was looking uh the y that has broken to the outside is is covered up the z uh, it's that'd be a tight throw. And with a linebacker on your throwing angle, that's impossible. Not to mention the re safety that's replacing is in a good wall off position. Uh, <laughs> everyone's covered up, man. They're, they're covered up. Like, like Mrs. J is covered up when she's mad at, mad at coach J right here. It just <laughs> does not look good whatsoever on this field. And Boogie just let a, a second or two tick off, maybe one Oh six here. Uh, he's going to pop under, run forward, and play was over right there. I mean, if he pulls it back half a second, you'll see he was totally, totally boxed off right there. Let's see if he can get it right at that 106 mark. I believe that's where it just pop, pop, boom. He rolls out of it, though, guys. Extends the play. And if you look, he's got a couple more options right here. He's kind of got... That Z wide receiver floating back out just over the R of Tigers. And that throw would make sense. But George is kind of a little bit panicked right here, as you would expect someone to be when they are under severe duress like this. And I think he wants to think run 
he starts to to finish that thought to run the football, realizes it's not there. And uh, when Boogie lets it go, what we're going to see is him throw a ball when he realizes he can't run on the sidearm to the back shoulder of the wide receiver in the very corner of the end zone. And guys, for a game-winning play, man, it, it, it brings a tear to my eye. It is so, so clutch. Let's go ahead and take a look at George. Whip this sidearm, back shoulder, one foot in, game over. Cheerleaders are flirting with you after the game. Coaches are telling you how great you are. Uh, extended the play. That, that was a loss right there, guys. They, they lost that game, and George uh, won that game for them. Uh, just with uh, grit and and want to the old uh, Michael Jordan. I'm not going to let you lose this game, right? We're we're going to win this game. Uh, very clutch, very clutch. Uh, we're kind of going to get the reverse <laughs> look, right? We're backs against the wall right here. Uh, very similar defense. Uh, we've got a single wing set. Uh, we've got what is this going to be like? Uh, I think it's actually trips to the left. You can't quite see it. It's it's off screen. Uh, it may be twins to the left. Um, but what we're going to get here is they're actually going to bring three up the middle on a RPO. So just like we were talking about, good segue from before, Boogie. Uh, can you read at an elite level on an RPO? Uh, go ahead and run just maybe to the mesh point uh, of this uh run uh read right here boogie if you can just let a second or two go to that match point there you go look at all three people came up the middle and it got blown up and, and george saw it a perfect perfect read he's in a little bit of of trouble here he's gonna roll out to the right and flow to the right and his only option is an absolute look at the the x at the top right of the screen uh he doesn't have a step on him the db is deeper than him the only thing that's going to work is a hundred percent perfectly thrown football uh let's watch george whip one out on the fly here guys whip diving catch man just <clears throat> accuracy is everything is a quarterback and and that was an absolutely perfectly thrown football. Beautiful read under pressure. He doesn't make that read right. That's a safety right there. If he doesn't have the wherewithal or panics, even one second, that's a safety. Uh, clutch starting to be a recurring theme from George McIntyre here. I don't know if you have an agenda or not, Coach Jay. I don't know if you have an agenda in this video because I think one of the biggest arguing points is that mobility of Deuce Knight and now these first – handful of plays we've watched for George McIntyre he's got mobility he he is escaping the pocket he's making plays with his feet he's still keeping his eyes down the field making the right throws making accurate throws uh do you have an agenda what are you what are you up to I, I might have a little of agenda but but you know what uh <laughs> in the famous words of uh, Lee Corso maybe not so fast in just a second I, I'm not going to pick on him too much and we'll get into this uh uh next play in in just a second i believe it's the next play anyway i'll have to take a look but um not an agenda both of these guys are 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 really really good players and there's no wrong answer i really believe that um at this point in time with their sophomore film in light there's no wrong answer i think these coaches are going to want to see a little more on tape before they make a final decision, if they had to pick one, I certainly well, would. That that would be what I would do is wait. Well, let's let's talk a little about recruiting. We still got a handful of plays to look at for George McIntyre. Then we're going to jump into Deuce Knight, take a look at his tape, guys. Make sure you do smash the thumbs up, share this thing out. We got seventy seven people watching live. Appreciate you guys hanging out for this film breakdown. Uh, we love bringing these to you. This is one of my favorite things we do on the channel. I said it a few weeks ago. Eric Kane asked me what was going on on the channel, and I told him he said you guys are creating content that nobody else is creating. So I think this will continue to grow, continue to build. And you guys come back and watch. I think this is a live stream. A lot of people are going to come back and watch, but hit the thumbs up, share it out. If you're watching this on a replay, leave a comment. Who do you want us to do a breakdown of next? Uh, we got tons of – we got Amari Jefferson. Did you know we didn't do Jake Merklinger? I went and checked. We did not do that. 
We never did Merklinger. I've gone so, crazy. I okay. thought we did yeah, too. Yeah, yeah. I, thought I thought I screwed up too. and didn't put it in the playlist. So I tried to fix that right before we went live. We never did a film breakdown. So maybe we need to do one on Merklinger. Uh, we're going to do tons of these things. But what do you guys want live? If you're watching the replay, put it in the comments section. Uh, but what I, I want to talk a little recruiting because kind of what sparked the idea to do this, somebody on VolQuest heard a little rumor that Deuce Knight was about to commit to Tennessee. And people flipped out. They went nuts and said, you cannot take this commitment now because if you take Deuce, you lose George. Let's say Deuce Knight wants to commit tomorrow, Coach Jay, as a head football coach. And look, you and I aren't getting paid $9 million to make this decision. Josh Heupel is. If Deuce Knight wants to commit, do you take it? Uh, uh, yeah, I do. I do. Why not? Scared, scared money don't make money, guys, right? Mm. Like, um. Let's get him in the boat and let's work on George. Um, it, it, I just, I think you got to press these kids. I want kids who want to compete. I want kids who want to play against each other, uh, who want to beat them out. Um, look, if you're a five star and you want to make it to the NFL, you got to be able to beat out another five star, right? You got to be able to go get that bag. You, you can't be scared. If you're going to play in the SEC, and, and go beat Bama on the road, go beat Georgia on the road, go do these big things that all of the Tennessee fans want to see. Uh, you can't be scared. We we got to get rid of this battered vol syndrome, this, oh, well, we can't do this and we can't do that. Let, let's let's shake that off, guys. Let's get back to what we were. Let's get back to this this powerhouse mentality and let's Let's get everyone in the boat. Let's get greedy. That's what I say, guys. Let's get greedy. I was having a conversation with Nelson on the Twitter DMs about battered ball syndrome, and he says, I don't have battered ball syndrome, Boogie. <laughs> I never have. And I was like, I said, got Nelson, little, I've got it. Got I've got it. I got it right now. I'm thinking about Joe Milton. Is he the Joe that I know he can be, or is he the Joe that I don't want him to be? I'm always battling battered ball syndrome all right let's jump back into george mcintyre got a couple of more plays to go through here this is uh 136 okay so i i was a i was a play play behind when i was talking earlier when i was talking about maybe picking on george we'll, we'll get to his his sprinting ability in a minute guys um <clears throat> here we have trips uh to the left side of the screen uh look at the respect they're giving george's deep ball uh, they got one, two, three DBs on uh, uh, the defense's right. And, of course, our left over that trips. We have press again on the X to the right side of the screen. So that deep ball is is certainly open. Uh, this play, however, is a designed uh, rollout to the trip side. It's designed to go deep to the Z wide receiver. That would be the wide receiver all the way to the outside of the left side of your I'm always mirror image to the left side of your screen or whichever side that is uh, for you guys watching me. Um, but to the left side of the screen, we're watching right now. Uh, Boogie, if you want to go ahead and let it let it run to maybe the 140 mark, something like that, uh, we're just going to see him roll the pocket out, which is good to be able to do. Um, certainly good. Rolls the pocket out. Now, I don't know if you just caught it right there, but Boogie, go back another couple seconds and then show me it again. Watch him switch his feet, guys, right? Beautiful. Jerks his shoulder back. His feet can be a little tighter, but he's six foot five. We'll forgive him. But watch the foot switch. Perfect. Perfect, perfect, perfect. Just get that back heel of that right foot in a little tighter, George. Kick that in a little tighter, and and, and old Coach Jay will call it a day on your form. Uh, whenever I see a good switch like that, my mind goes to, to some of the greats who could do that. Um, Carson Palmer, uh, what comes to mind, uh, had a great switch like that. Um, uh, Bryce for, for Bama had a good switch like that. Uh, what we see here, though, is the Z wide receiver has gotten a little space, even though the corner is tight on him. Boogie, go ahead and let maybe one more second tick off this clock. Okay, so George was a little bit worried about that coverage being a little tight here. So he's going to do what a true uh, quarterback pro does and throw the back shoulder in it. it. It saves this play, guys, and scores a touchdown. Boogie, let it fly. Watch this perfect back shoulder. Nine, go route throw. 
man, oh man, is that impossible to defend or what? How do you defend that? You don't defend that. Uh, it, the corner had a decent turnaround. He'd have been better to pin and wheel his energy. Uh, yeah, actually, he did pin and wheel. Uh, it made me a liar, which is why he got there in time to try to get a hand up. But perfect throw. Absolute textbook perfect throw. Beautiful back shoulder. George continuing to put on a clinic here in his sophomore film. Uh, Wade Rouse for five. Thank you for the super chat, brother. Appreciate that tip in the tip jar. Says I talked to someone close to Deuce recent, and they said he is very high on Tennessee. Can't wait to go watch him this fall. That both of these guys are high on Tennessee, and I think it was McIntyre said, "I'm not ready to say who's out front." The Volquest crew keeps saying that Tennessee is out front for both of these guys, and again, it goes back to why this film breakdown is so intriguing, and and what happens if Deuce wants to pull the trigger. I think if, if George. Wanted to pull the trigger. There's no question. They're taking it. Oh yeah. The, one, the, like the number two, number one player in the state, top two quarterback. They're taking it. No questions asked. The question comes: What happens when Deuce gives you a phone call and says, uh, "Coach Hype, I'm ready to go ahead and pull the trigger. I want to get in the boat." That's where it gets interesting. But uh, yeah, I think I really truly believe Tennessee leads uh, for both of these guys. We have got a couple of more plays to look at here. Let me get the the tape queued up. I need I need two boogies. I'm not enough. I need I need another boogie here in the back room doing all the editing and the the clicking. And there you the, go. Yeah, I, not enough. Here we go. Let me rewind it just a little bit. This one kind of went quick. All right, there we go. There you go. Uh, we at the where are we at here? Two, We're two, at two fifty two. Two fifty two. Uh, I think my film might be. Uh, no, we're just paused. Oh, okay. Sorry. I got a little confused by the color scheme there. My uh, my brain went a little colorblind for a minute. Okay, so we've been asking for it, guys. Um, not a lot to talk about here. As you can see, uh, Coach Jay, why did you put a timestamp at this huge mess <laughs> of a business going on on our screen in front of us right now? And I put this timestamp on here uh, because I thought it'd be fun to take a look at how well uh, George can run. And, and that's what we're going to look at. We're going to look at him running in the open field. Um, I just thought you guys should take a peek a bit at it. We, sh we don't need to really talk about it uh, very much, um, but just something to bear in mind. He's got long six foot five uh, legs, but he certainly isn't going to set the world on fire. And when we watch Deuce run in a minute, I, I think this film will um, show you how vast their speed differences go ahead and take a look at it boogie go ahead and take a take a look at speed again gets a little bit of an angle on him uh but gets out of it you know a little db about had about a quarter of the amount of strides that uh that george did with those little legs compared to george's legs but yeah he still caught up with them so yeah, it, it's not impossible, but he's not setting the world on fire with his legs, certainly, guys. Uh, but I, I, and I, but I go back to being like, if you have elite level arm talent, if, if George's arm is so much better than Deuce Knight's arm, but he and he can escape pressures, we saw in those first few, play, few plays. That's that's good enough. That's that's mm -hmm. you don't have to have elite level speed at the quarterback position. No, no, absolutely not. You need uh, your your mental speed is the only speed that counts at the quarterback position. It's, it's a thinking man's position. Um, and, and you have to be able to, to dissect the game at an extremely high level and make extremely quick decisions in, in order to play that position. If Deuce can do that, I mean, not Deuce, sorry, if George can do that, then, then that's all he needs. A hundred percent boogie, no doubt about it. Open and cl closed, uh, uh, case there. All right. Uh, Coming down on the final George play. Uh, old school football, guys. Look at this. We got double tight, <clears throat> double wing, goal line formation from the defense. Man, I love stuff like this. I don't know about you guys, but whenever I get a, a third and goal, fourth and goal inside the five-yard line, I love it, man. I love watching the, the, the big guys go to war. Uh, and right here, uh, the offense is, is going to make a bet. They're going to make a bet that this defense is going to bring pressure and try to stuff this run. And they're going to make the bet, the offense is going to make the bet that 
that George can pick apart where that pressure came from, that he can make an extremely quick decision and get this ball out from where the pressure came. So, Boogie, if you want to uh, let two, two, three seconds tick off this, maybe to the, the 408 mark, 407 mark, something like that. Uh, there you go. It, it's it's covered up. He might be able to hit that that outside shoulder of his wing back leaking out on that little um, uh, little flare out to the outside of the end zone. George is churned on it. I think he gets a little bit spooked here. And, and if we're being nitpicky, which, uh, I mean, I guess that's that's what I get paid to do, guys. That's exactly he, he right. Pro- yeah, he, he probably should try to throw that outside shoulder. Uh, but he he panics just a little bit here, Boogie, and uh, run it to the 411 mark. Let's see what he does. He's going to pull this down. Um, and and he, his eyes are there. Boom. Oh. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> you guys see where that screen is was froze, right, for a second. It, he gets pop 411. All right. Game over. But he gets the dang ball out on his way down, guys. He gets the dang ball out. I mean, look at that. That's three guys pulling George down, and he's got the arm strength to whip one out between three defenders, get it out to the open man that was abandoned by his coverage. Jeez Louise, guys. I I know I said it earlier, but holy cheese muffins. This guy is clutch, man. Absolute clutch city, and I love a clutch player. I'm here for it. Give me Wayne Gretzky. uh, Give me Michael. Give me Larry. Give me Kobe. Give me all the clutch players, I want them all at the University of Tennessee. Incredible awareness, incredible ability to make something out of nothing, a true uh, winner. And once again, I'm going to keep beating it like a dead horse. This, these kids are sophomores, guys. Wow. Just wow. So don't bury the lead. Uh, don't give us your pick. I know you were teasing it Monday night in the chat on the NCAA stream. You said nobody's getting uh, my pick yet. You're going to have to stay tuned for the live breakdown. So uh, but don't don't bury the lead. But what, what do you think about McIntyre? The thing that I think you guys realize it by now, I say it pretty much every time we do one of these, uh, Coach Jay watches all the tape, all the tape. Boogie just shows up and watch, watches the clips. Boogie watches the five or six clips. Coach Jay watches all the film and then handpicks what he wants to talk about. So you've watched a lot of tape on McIntyre. What do you like about his game? What do you what are you concerned about with his game? Uh, what break him down and then we'll move into Deuce Knight. You know, I <clears throat> I think I touched on it a, a second ago. Um, sometimes he can just just panic just a little bit, but he's also so young that it, it almost is like, well, well, that's just going to go away in time. The more comfortable he gets, the more he plays at that level, he, the more comfortable he'll be and he'll just trust his arm talent because man, I'll tell you guys, um, I think, I think George out of all the film that I've watched him and Arian Carter had, you know, I'll, I'll start just marking down, okay, that play, that play, that play, that play, that play, that play, <laughs> play timestamps. And George was like the whole film, as was Arian Carter. And it's just like, <clears throat> he, he made my job hard. He made my real job really hard to do this because it's like, uh, what do I want to show? And um, that clutch gene is, is what I wanted to show because it, it, it's what stuck out to me. It was the theme of his film. Even above his arm strength, uh, which is top tier, top top one one point one one percent of the country arm strength. He he is amazing. And uh man, it like I said, I, I would love to have this kid on campus. I think Hypel would turn this kid into an absolute monster. And Hypo likes to stretch that field, as you guys know. He, he would be keeping defensive coordinators and safeties and DB coaches up late, late at night with their ability to stretch the field with George on the, on the, on the, on in the game. Sorry. <clears throat> Y'all don't feel sorry for coach Jay. Yeah. He, he works hard. He works hard. Good life. Pri- 
probably than anybody else on this channel. He works hard. Don't feel sorry for him. Because the last time we did a film breakdown, he goes back and watches an entire high school football game from like a year ago. And that's for a guilty pleasure. It ain't because I put him to work. It's because yeah. this man is obsessed. And that's why he is a great addition to the Talking Falls Network. Let's uh do a couple of little quick plug plug. I, 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 I forgot at the top of the video. Look, Monday night, Monday night, y'all were insane. We stayed live all night long. We played NCAA football. We talked ball football. I don't even remember what we talked about. Uh, and, and I owe you guys a couple of shirts, and I put it in the Google randomizer. Two winners. Two winners from Monday night. Two free T-shirts are going out. I'm going to announce it here. If they don't tune in, they don't watch this, they don't win. They got to be here right now. Leave a comment. You can email me, snakeandboogie at gmail.com, or you can hit me up on Facebook. If you're in the group, you can hit me up on Twitter. Send me a DM. Matt Zimmerman and Lee Honda Hilt, you are the winners of the free T-shirts. I, I didn't care if you gave $250 or if you gave $1.72 times. I put it in the randomizer, and that's what came out. And speaking of merchandise, you guys can go check out the merchandise. Go to bonfire.com slash store slash talking balls we would appreciate the support go check out the merch you got your bama scoreboard shirt balls by 50 state pride logo all kinds of clean merch something for everybody go check it out bonfire.com slash store slash talking balls the link is also in the description below uh, we got some new merch coming your way probably august probably going to drop that in august so stay tuned for that and i always say if you guys have merch i want to see you repping it Tag me up on Twitter, at Boogie Bentley. Let me know you're repping that Talking Balls merch. Uh, let me scroll it across the bottom. Go show Coach Jay some love. Go follow him on Twitter, at Coach underscore JP underscore 123. You can see all the Twitter handles. They're also in the description below. Uh, give us a little love on Twitter. We would appreciate it. Uh, we're going to jump this thing over to Deuce Knight, but just one more quick plug, plug. Don't forget, coming up. On Thursday, June the 15th, 7 p.m. Eastern Time, myself, Sports Talk, Jay going one-on-one. -on -one. We're going to talk all things Tennessee football. And then later this month, Dill Dowden, lead recruiting reporter for Tennessee Rivals, is going to be on the show talking all things recruiting. His words to me were, hopefully some fun stuff happens and we'll have lots to talk about. So it's going to be a good time. Tons of stuff coming your way. Going to be a busy, busy June and July uh, also, once we get to the season, man, I'm fired up. Me and Coach Jay doing a morning show on Fridays. Going to try to figure out Mondays, BBD, Eric Kane. We're going to do something, so stay tuned for that as well. But let's jump in to Deuce Knight. We talked about George McIntyre, in-state kid. Deuce Knight, on the other hand, uh, he's from Mississippi. But you can see there, third-ranked player out of Mississippi, top-10 quarterback according to the On3 industry rankings, four-star prospect. Coach Jay, do you think, I think, do you think he also ends up a five-star Oh yeah, absolutely, no doubt in my mind. <clears throat> he's got, yeah. he's got two full years to get there, and this kid is going to be a camp phenom. He, he, yeah, yes. Short answer, yes. Full stop. Yeah, absolutely. And please, <clears throat> please, God Almighty, don't let him go to Lane Kiffin. Um, what, whatever happens, please, um, just don't let that happen. That's all I got to say. Um, that would be. Super annoying. I'd rather see him go to Hugh Freeze than I would uh, Lane Kiffin. So talking about Deuce Knight, uh, this is one day ago from Cole Patterson over at Rivals.com. Says Deuce Knight is one of the fastest rising signal callers in the nation. Already ranked as the number one dual threat quarterback by Rivals. Also has a real opportunity to move up even more in the rankings after a strong and productive spring in which he took full advantage of every camp and the seven-on-seven -seven setting that he was in. What do you think about seven on seven? I think we've talked about it before. Nico really kind of, for me, put it on the map. Nico was very heavily involved in seven on seven, not only competition wise, relationship wise, recruiting wise. How much do you value as a coach? What do you think <clears throat> seven on seven gives to these kids? Uh, I think it gives the quarterbacks in particularly a huge jump on developing their game. Um, I can definitely speak on, the quarterbacks in California, um, they they start seven 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 on seven at an extremely young age in California. Um, as young as as young as seven years old, man. These kids are out there slaying in the rock in seven on seven, and it pays dividends on the field. These kids fling it around like you wouldn't believe nowadays when they when they do get into the pads, and it's been amazing to watch the development 
of this game that we love and I think a catalyst for it has been starting starting these young quarterbacks in seven on seven and and letting them learn that position at a high level let them understand route trees route patterns defensive coverages let them see them happen live in a competition setting um i think it's huge i think it's developing the offenses uh at a high level and i would just like to see more uh young defensive kids get involved in it at a young age than just um uh kind of more just your high tier uh, uh players like you get nowadays cole patterson from just, Rowles. Just it. cole patterson <laughs> goes on to say the athletic lefty can beat defenses with his big arm and dynamic ability uh, wins in and out of the pocket, a big reason why he has emerged as a priority target for several programs in the 25 cycle. Notre Dame, Tennessee are the two to watch at this point in his recruitment. He's got Ole Miss, TCU, Notre Dame, Georgia, and Tennessee. He's been on campus to Ole Miss a ton. Uh, been to Tennessee four times. Like I said earlier, he camped last week. That's something that uh, uh, Dale Dowden that's going to be on the show coming up third or fourth week of the month, he's going to, you know, he covered that. He sent it to me. He has been so generous. Like that's sometimes it blows my mind. The stuff that he has sent me, he has gone in and he's like, I don't know if you still have a rivals account or not. You know, a lot of turmoil there when, when Brent hubs and company moved to on three, he's like, I don't know if you still have an account. Check out this article that I just wrote. And he screen captures it and sends it all to me for free. And he's like, check this out. Uh, So very, very giving person. Uh, So I'm looking forward to having him on the channel, talking a little vol football with him, but let's jump into the tape for deuce night. I'm excited to see, I, man, I was, I'm not going to say where I was leaning. We're just going to take a look at Deuce Knight. Here we go, Coach Jay, right out of the gate, zero, zero, zero. All right, <clears throat> here we go. Uh, three, three, five, look from the defense. We got uh, deuces. Um, we're going to get a, a, a play action look um, at, out of Deuce here. Uh, by the way, I don't know if it's just because he's got the name Deuce, but their coach certainly loves to to run out of deuces with the double wide uh, receiver set here. But what we're going to get is a skinny post out of the um, the uh, the the uh, my brain went numb. Y wide receiver, which is the slot wide receiver to the top side of the field. Uh, Boogie, if you want to just maybe let a second or two tick off to the mesh point of said play action play. There we go. Uh, Deuce is looking to the left side of the screen, and he does not want to go there uh, showing a high-level quarterback IQ already as a sophomore by by looking his defenders off, by taking a look at that quick pop pass to number four, <clears throat> and also getting the safety to freeze to that bottom side of the screen. Uh, Boogie, go ahead and let maybe one or two more seconds bleed off this clock. Uh, j- just a tick, though. All right. Already, we got to see him evade. And uh, when when Boogie plays, uh, Deuce is going to run this ball right about to the 30-yard line. And if Boogie can pause this the second it hits the five-second mark, uh, we're going to just see some of the athletic stuff that Deuce can do. Uh, when he pauses it there, he's just going to stick his foot right on that 30-yard line and catch that skinny post that has developed uh, on the inside hash mark of the 15 yard line from that Y wide receiver. But you go ahead and try to run me to that, that five second mark. Boom. Yeah. Right there. He just stopped right in time falls out. You can let it play. We'll, we'll take another look at it. See if you get that bam. And man, with a flick of the wrist, I, not a lot of quarterbacks can just really just flick a ball left-handed boom back of the end zone. Uh, He's got a cannon. The velocity of Deuce's ball is absolutely amazing. Heck of a job keeping from from breaking the line of scrimmage play and not getting that penalty there. Uh, Deuce's athleticism is just oozing. We're going to see a lot more of it throughout this film. But a special kid, a special talent, elite level athleticism. And once again, I really hope we don't have to worry about running a, a spy on him. Uh, because he's on another team. That that's the last thing we want to see. I gotta be honest. I feel like <clears> you're <throat> playing games with me. One of these kids has an arm, one of these kids has athleticism. You show me McIntyre and you show me his escapability. You show me his pocket awareness. You show how he can extend plays. The first play out of the gate for Deuce Knight, you show me his arm talent. 
How am I supposed to make a decision when you're giving me conflicting information? Coach I, I'm trying to make your job as, as difficult as <clears throat> as the coach's job, right? Like they, they've got a conundrum here if they have to pick one. But once again, guys, these are the problems we need. Yeah. Uh, yes. And gosh, go get them both. I, I, I'm going to keep harping on it. Let's get greedy. Let's get them both. I want them both. Yeah, uh, George Deuce, if you ever get get to see this film by some some chance it, it's gonna uh, happen. out there We're gonna um, watch it. come to tennessee come to tennessee josh is going to develop these kids he's going to develop milton you saw what he did with hendon uh he puts kids into the league he runs an elite offense <clears throat> no one has a better culture uh the fan base is fanatical we're gonna love you both um and we're going to make sure you both get a little coin in your pocket, too. I got a sneaky feeling. Mm, mm. All right, here we go. Moving right along. <clears throat> Next play. All right. Once again, we got deuces. Second and five. We got a nickel look from the defense here. Um, we're going to get another another slant play out of that Y. Uh, I've shown you it for a different reason here, though. And, and we're going to kind of get to the crux of this of this biscuit pretty quickly here. Uh, Boogie, if you can run the, do me a favor, run this down to about the 12 and a half, 13 second mark as this play gets developing here. All right, we're gonna see that why that slot wide receiver go out for the slant. Just another tick more here, Boogie. Right there, you see the running back? What is he looking at? The running back on the top side of the screen. It's certainly not the defender blitzing deuce. That that absolutely what he might be looking at is is the nice wall that his offensive line has created. He's like, man, I don't need to block, you know. And Deuce is like, with friends like this, <laughs> who needs enemies, <laughs> guys, right? And uh, the linebacker in the middle of the field, right at the bottom of the middle of that G, he has not really walled off that slant route or slice route. And if you don't speak football, slice route is just. Uh, a little bit more of a stretched out slant, not quite as sharp. Um, he needs to wall that off a little better and get a little deeper uh, because number nine at the bottom of the screen running that drag route, it's a lot easier as a linebacker to go forward than it is backwards. And and it, you young linebackers watch this. Make sure we just settle a little bit deeper here and I'll get off the linebacker topic for now, but that running back certainly needs to keep his head on a swivel. It's why it's the hardest thing to teach young running backs. He needs to protect them. And what I want you guys to do when Boogie hits play on this, I don't want you to watch the pass. Boogie's Boogie's going to play the, the play again, and we can watch what an amazing strike of a slant pass this is. I want you to, to watch Deuce step into this throw and get the old famous high-low hit because that's exactly what, what happens to him here. Boogie, go ahead and let it play, and then we can go back and watch him. Just boom, boom. <laughs> Poor Deuce, right? Um, I, I guarantee you coaches gave the old running back some crap about Deuce getting absolutely plowed on that play. But the pass, guys, he just leads that slant, that slice route perfectly, steps into the pocket, whips it past that linebacker's ear, an absolute strike, six points, and... Uh, uh, we're celebrating in the end zone. That's, I will say, I hope the uh, for sure. I hope the running back's not watching this. Deuce can watch <laughs> it. I hope the running back's not watching. You, you know, I promise you guys. I, I I promise you guys. His coaches let him have it on that <laughs> film room the next day. A lot worse than Coach J. Uh, just just let him have it. Uh, picking up right here though, we got second and ten. Uh, we had a uh, deuces again, but right here that why. His, his come into motion. So the play we're looking at here is going to be deuces, Y motion, jet sweep, zone read. Okay, so he's going to be optioning that jet sweep and he can either hand it off or he can keep it and possibly pass it if it's an RPO, although this is not, or keep it on the run. Uh, your right guard is going to be pulling from your right to the left. And uh, Boogie, if you go ahead and let this uh, let this one run uh, just till the guard kind of clears that line of scrimmage on his pull. Um, go ahead and let that pop, pop, pop right there. Uh, Deuce sees that hole, right? Look at his eyes. 
His eyes slanted inside. He sees that the zone read was closed off by the D end and the linebacker with his foot pointed to the outside of the C. <clears throat> a perfect inseam route. Uh, the backside tackle is pushing backside number 45 at about the, uh, we'll call that the 47 yard line. And when Boogie lets this play, we won't pause it again. And we're just going to sit back and admire uh, the twin turbo jets of Deuce. Boogie, let's let's go ahead and let it play. And just the apps, mm. oh my, my oh. word. And we want to talk about SEC speed, guys. That is it live and in living color on the uh, Boogie uh, Coach J film breakdown series here. Just absolute turbo jets. Uh, good night. Uh, sayonara. See you later. Whatever euphemism. Perfect read. Follows the guard beautifully on the seal. <sighs> Blink of the eye. He's gone. See you That's later. That's what I'm talking about when I talk about mm. speed and athleticism. How much of a priority do you – what do you what – I've not seen anything from Deuce Knight's arm. I don't know what you got dialed up in the tape coming up next. I've not seen anything from his arm that makes me think, oh, well, he can't keep up with George McIntyre. Uh, George McIntyre can't run like that. So we're – don't bury the lead. We're saving that. We're an hour into this thing. We're going to get to the, the finish line soon. Uh, don't bury the lead. But how much of, how much stock do you put into arm talent versus that? That Just like Hendon Hooker. Hendon Hooker could – put you on his back with his legs or with his arm or with his leadership ability. So many, so many things Hendon Hooker had that he could win a football game with. What do you put in um, stock? I, I mean, I, I think I put, I, yeah, once again, I don't want to bury the lead. I think they're even, and I, and I am going to pick a side. I, I'm not saying I'm not, I am. Speed is extremely important in this conference. It's game changing in this conference. It gives you an extra player that the defense has to defend. And so maybe it edges it out by about 2%. And it, you know, if it were, if it were George, you know, if, if Deuce had mediocre arm talent and that much speed, then I'd give it to arm talent, but is, good as deuce's arm talent is I, i'd probably give that speed a little bit of an edge over the arm talent as tight as they are but um you know once again we're splitting hairs guys we we really are splitting hairs there and uh there's another topic we'll bring back into this uh when we make our decision but let's let's keep trucking through this i want to see if if deuce can 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 keep an error for happening or fix a broken play, right? We saw it out of George a couple times. We saw the old, the nerf play, the go, go long, how long play. We saw the, the clutch goal line plays. Um, here we got trips to the top side of the screen. Um, the, the inside slot wide receiver. So at the very top of the screen, you have the Z. Inside of him, you have the S, the slot. And then inside of him, you have the Y. The Y is starting to dart out for a bubble screen. Well, the slot wide receiver to his outside in the middle is going to whiff on his block. And if Boogie uh, brings this to about the, uh, just a second or two, Boogie, till he turn, till Deuce turns and wants to throw to that bubble screen at the top, top side of the screen, we can go ahead and freeze it right there if you can capture that. Right there. Yeah, there you go. He wants to throw that, but his wide receiver has whiffed, right? He doesn't have no block. He could throw that. It's probably going to get blown up. Maybe not because the backers misplayed it, but most likely right here, he understands this is not going to work out. Could I throw a dart to the slot wide receiver that's kind of sat soft into the zone? Sure, I could throw that, but uh, Deuce is highly intelligent just like George, and he's very smart right here. He's going to play for time, and he knows that the defense is overloaded to the strong side of the field, the top side of the field, the trips side of the field. So he's going to reverse his field and break to the bottom of your screen where he's got one-on-one -on -one coverage on the X wide receiver whose foot is on the 20-yard line on the bottom side of your screen. Boogie, if we want to go ahead and rattle it off till he switches, go ahead and pause turns his feet just like we saw George do. 
And uh, let's let's go ahead and take a look at him. Whip one out, guys. Perfect. Very back of the end zone. Strike one foot in. Making something out of nothing. Turning a bad play into a clutch, clutch play. Perfect turn of the shoulders. Perfect typewriter feet. Uh, when you felt the pressure coming your way, beautifully done by Deuce there. Beautifully done. Uh, picking up here, we got him coming into the goal line. We got Deuces on both sides of the field. Uh, defense is in a little tight here. We're going to have a design play call, uh, very similar to the George rollout play, except there's no rollout. It's just a straight designed play. So it's all about accuracy on this play. What we're going to get is the X wide receiver. That's the wide receiver on the very outside of uh, the bottom of the, the screen is going to run a little, a little ten and out to the goal line, a little ten and titty bump to the outside. The nine wide receiver, the slot to his inside, the S wide receiver is going to run a drag to pull away the safety and the linebacker. So he has one on one coverage. Um, if we want to go ahead and <clears throat> and run this boogie what we're going to see is deuce just step back and deliver um a ball perfectly on time perfectly placed where only one person can catch it and and it's it's absolutely beautiful to the corner of this end zone looks small but man this is a game of inches and that is an absolute perfect perfect pass a laser guided missile uh both Great job by the wide receiver, by the way, guys. That's a that's a catch on Sunday, boys. That's a two feet in and a strike uh, to the outside corner of the plate. We got one more play we're going to take a look at here from Deuce Knight. I want you guys to come back to the comment section. We asked you at the top of the video who you were leaning towards, and I want you to come back and tell me, George McIntyre or Deuce Knight, who are you looking for in the class of 25? If you could only pick one. I'm only allowing you to pick one. That's the catch. <clears throat> you got to pick one. Shout out to G. White in the chat. G. White in the chat is a member of the channel. This is a dude that I've argued with more than anybody. More than anybody. And he is a member of the channel. We argued about Harrison Bailey until I was blue in the face, passed out unconscious in my office because I was sick and tired of yelling at G. White. But guess what? He's still here because Talking Balls is a family. It is a community. We're talking with you, not at you. That's what this channel is all about. So if you dig it, make sure you subscribe. Click that bell for notifications. You're not going to miss out when we go live or when we drop a video. Also, shout out to G. White for becoming a member. It's only a dollar. If G. White... <clears throat> If G. White can pay a dollar a month, then so can you. If you're not a member, hit that join button down below. Uh, you can become a part of the family, contribute to what we are doing. Give me the opportunity to do this thing full time. Look, I got to pay Coach Jay $100,000 a year to be a part of this channel. Uh, so make sure that you uh, can support that. Hit the join button down below. We would greatly appreciate it. All right, we got one last play to take a look at from Deuce Knight. And then we're going to put Coach Jay on the hot seat. He's going to have to pick Deuce Knight or George <clears throat> McIntyre. Okay, guys, we're gonna we're gonna try to show you uh, a little more of the difference that we were talking about um, between George and Deuce, right? Same as before, guys. Okay, just coming the other way. We've got Deuces. Uh, the Y is already in motion. Same play. That Deuces Y motion jet sweep zone read. Except um, in football. Things don't go as planned always. And the play before went as planned. And this one is not. Uh, we already see the Mike, or sorry, the Will taking off on the blitz. We're going to get a, a, a Mike Will fire here. And because of this middle linebacker blitz from the defense, it's going to not allow <clears throat> that guard that's coming from the offense's right uh, to the left or the defense is left to the defense is right uh, to clear and get through. So there's two things Deuce can do. He can hand it off to the, to the jet sweep to that Y slot wide receiver. Uh, but if the blitz bears pressure to that angle, it's not going to work. And um, Boogie, if you could just literally let like one second go one or one and a half, two seconds, We'll, we'll see that mesh point. We'll see both these linebackers go, right? Look at him look. He wants to cut behind that guard, but it's not there. Um, Boogie, go ahead and let two more seconds go. We're going to see him knife back in. 
pause. Okay. So <laughs> what he's done by just completely turning instead of following his offensive lineman is he's allowed the defense to wash too far to the top side of the screen. Uh, 35 in the middle of the field, as well as 11, are going to dig that front foot or side foot in and cut back. And this is just how fast, smooth, and elusive Deuce is. He's just going to kind of quickly go around him really fast. Boogie, let a, let another three seconds run off this clock. Let him, let him pop around real whoop. And then, yeah, guess what we're looking at all of a sudden? Uh, Mr. Jets, let's go ahead and take it to about the 417 mark, Boogie. And we're going to talk about something right there. Okay, you can barely see it, but at the very, very top of the screen, at the 45-yard line um, going into the, 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 the defensive side of the field, the safety has an angle on him. And I believe I've said it on this channel before, but whenever you see a high school kid beat a DB when they have five yard advantage and an angle on them, and he ain't going to cut inside. He's just going to beat them to the outside guys. And whenever you see uh, a, a football player, and I don't care if they're playing tailback or, or the right guard or whatever position, whenever they do that, uh, we're talking about elite SEC speed. Let's go ahead and watch him beat him to that point, Boogie, and just drive home how fast uh, Deuce is. Just elite, elite speed. Waggles around, pops through. Um, there's a million plays like this on the tape. I just kind of showed one. Um, there's a million examples. He's got deep balls, too. I wouldn't say his lead throw is as elite but he can certainly whip a dart 40 yards, 50 yards, no problem. That 65, 70, 70 yard lead isn't as elite as George's. But um, I suppose everyone wants to know what Coach Shea thinks about this one. Is that what we're getting to? That's what we're All at. All right, guys. The time I'll, has I'll, come. I'll, yeah, the time has come. The hour is nigh, right? So, <clears throat> Once again, I think I would play for time if I were these coaches. I really, really think I would play for time. But um, I, I think the arm skill is that elite, Boogie. I think he's super intelligent. I think he's a little more unnerved. There's no way Coach Jay's internet cut out right when he was about to tell you guys who he was taking. There's no way this is how this stream ends. Yeah. Oh, you locked yeah. up right as you were you were right to the to the, end, to the, to the, to the breaking news. All right, let's reset. Let's reset. Okay. Okay. Yeah. So I, I don't know how far I got in, but what I was Start saying over. is, you know, that elite speed. Look, th there's some things McIntyre does better with his arm strength. There's some things Deuce goes better with his speed, and everyone who's ta been talking about how uh, Deuce's uh, game fits better in the hypo system. You know what? You, you, you're right, <laughs> right? You're right. But for me, there's there's one other thing that fits better in hypo system, and that is making a cerebral, quick defensive read quickly with elite arm strength. Uh, we saw it at a very very high level with Drew Locke at Missouri, and I think if George can settle down and not panic, I think Deuce is a little more calm. I think he might digest the game at a little higher level. And hey, I've had the advantage of kind of watching all their films in certain games. But I'll tell you right now, in three, four games, I might change my mind. I may think Deuce is better four games into this new season. They're going to develop over the next few years. I think if I had to pick today, I would take George by like a like a, a fraction deuce if you're watching this come to tennessee man i prove my prove my ass wrong you know yep. sorry but yeah go come prove me wrong and it, it wouldn't be that wrong because i might change my mind in three games um these are special kids these are elite kids guys what a time to be a tennessee volunteer fan uh you saw what hendon did i think 
I think Milton puts it together this year. I think Nico does incredible things. You guys know how high I am on Nico. And we'll see what Merklinger can do. But George induced whichever one we get, it will be a win. Uh, we'll be behind it. And if we get them both, we'll uh, we'll be singing Rocky Top. That's for sure. I don't no know doubt Blake's, about it. I don't know if Blake is blaming you or me, but uh, one of us just separated the fan base single-handedly yeah. right here on the Talking Balls. Yeah, and, and, and I think, and correct me if I'm wrong, Boogie, but I think you're on the other side of this, are you not? Man, I've been leaning you can, towards yeah, Deuce yeah. Knight for so yeah. long because of his athleticism. And, and I went even, back and even, forth. Yeah, that's but that, that's the thing. That's the beautiful problem to have when when you've got Nico and you've got Jake Merklinger who says, competition, hold my beer. I ain't scared of competition. I'm not scared of the $8 million man. I'm going to come in and compete. Jake Merklinger is not coming here to sit the bench. He's coming here to compete. Now, do I think Jake beats out Nico? No, I do not. Somebody just sent me a text just this week and said, I think Jake's better than Nico. I think Jake's going to beat him out. And I said, I'm going to screen capture this and send it to you when Nico wins the Heisman. Uh, and, and hey, like you just said, Jake, prove me wrong. Prove me oh, wrong. Shit. And I, because I'm going to be behind whoever's taking the snaps. I don't care if it's Nico. I don't care if it's Jake Merklinger. I don't care if it's Deuce Knight or George McIntyre or Harrison Bailey. I do not freaking care. Whoever is taking the snaps, I'm behind them 100%. I was behind Jarrett Garantano. So much to the fact that people said that I was a lunatic and that I was a sunshine pumper. Meanwhile, I've got his aunt messaging me on Facebook saying, thank you for being a genuine dude and understanding that Jarrett is a human being. Like he's a human and he's given his all he's doing. You know, I, I'm, I support anybody that reps the power T and gets behind this football team. But again, it's a beautiful problem to have Nico, Jake, uh, Knight, McIntyre, whoever it is. Uh, the fact that we are recruiting the quarterback position at an elite level, it is a good problem to have. The only thing that throws a wrench, if I didn't know who they, where they were from, if I was just looking at the talent, I'm going to snot. What throws a wrench into that is the fact that McIntyre is an in-state kid. That's that. It's got to be a priority. People are concerned. People are worried about whether or not that impacts recruiting moving forward. I have no idea. I have no idea. We'll see how it plays out. Uh, before we wrap this thing up, Told you I was going to throw a wild card at you. Madden Iamaliava, little brother of Nico. A lot of buzz about him last summer when Nico was going through the recruiting process when he committed. Uh, Madden Iamaliava is also a kid that Tennessee is still recruiting. Where does he fit into this thing? You know, we can talk about whether or not they take two. There's no way they're taking three quarterbacks. Mm -hmm. So where do you think Madden, and again, we talked a little bit off air about this, but where do you think he fits in in the grand scheme of things? I think, I don't think we've, hey, hey, listen, you just saw two kids where they've got an entire sophomore year on tape and yeah, they might be sophomores and uh, we might get more clarity after this year. I think we will get clarity, by the way. I think after this season, if we were to revisit this, we might get a more clear leader out of the two, but we'll see. Maybe they just keep pressing their game forward. Madden, we didn't see him. You mentioned it, Boogie. It was all mop-up duty. I saw Madden uh, when I went during a uh, bye week last year. I got to see Nico and Madden. Madden played because Nico had thrown like seven touchdowns at halftime or something. And it was mop-up duty. And it's just hard to get a read on mop-up duty, right? It's impossible to get a read. But I'll tell you what. Madden looks like a carbon copy of Nico. He throws like a carbon copy of Nico. I don't think his um, field generalship and IQ was where Nico's was as a sophomore, but he's also been behind his brother where he can't step in. So he hasn't had that light, that time to shine, that um, those tough games against uh, a cathedral and Long Beach and Downey and those other powerhouses uh, that face Warren over every year. But I'll tell you what, old Coach Shea gets the right bye week. He might just sneak over there and and, and get the 4 one um, on that. It's always nice to go see um, an old colleague and Coach P. So I, I would certainly love that if I get the opportunity. Right now, I think he goes to the Pac-12, but, but don't sleep on him. Certainly a dark horse. 
certainly a dark horse and the family is very fond of Tennessee and the family environment as they should be. Uh, I'll tell anyone who wants to listen, it's, it's the best place for college football in the country. And I know I'm, I'm preaching to the choir. That is going to wrap it up for the live film breakdown for George McIntyre and Deuce Knight. If you're watching the replay, put it in the comment section. Who are you rolling with? You rolling with George McIntyre, in-state kid, or are you rolling with Deuce Knight and why? Tell us why. Don't just give us the answer. Tell us why. We want to hear from you guys. Say it all the time. This is a community. We're not talking at you. We're talking with you. We value your opinion, so we want to hear from you. Look, I talked about it in this morning's video, uh, and I want to remind you guys, I had a fun video coming in the morning, but some scheduling restrictions changed that. It's not coming in the morning. Trying to continue to work on this. I think if this happens, if what I want to do happens, it is going to create some fun content for you guys. But there is some stuff going on, some scheduling stuff going on, trying to bring it to you as soon as possible. So I may just let this stream sit. I may drop a video in the morning. Just be looking for that. Make sure you're subscribed and that bell is clicked for notifications so you don't miss out when we go live or when we drop a video. One last reminder, Sports Talk J going to be in the house next Thursday, 7 p.m. Eastern time. Del Dowden, lead recruiting reporter for Tennessee Rivals, going to be in the house later this month. All kinds of fun content coming your way. Tons of recruiting news is right around the corner, so make sure you're dialed in and subscribed. Always a special shout-out to Coach Jay for coming on here, dropping a little knowledge. I love it, man. I love this series. I love the live streams. I love the videos. I love it all because I feel like I'm the color guy, and he's the play-by-play guy. He brings you the information. I feed him the softballs, and we roll. I think we got good chemistry. I think you guys dig it. Uh, If you like what Coach Jay does, let him know in the comment section as well. But that's going to do it for this one. He's Coach Jay. My name is Boogie Bentley. This is the Talking Balls Network. Go Big Orange.